On the night of Sunday, 5th May 2024, a group of Jewish people peacefully gathered for a counter-protest on Monash Clayton University campus in Melbourne, Australia. They peacefully assembled to raise their objection to a pro-Hamas encampment that was set up on the campus by a group of radical Marxist students. These radical Marxists had sown hatred and division on the campus. In response to the peaceful counter-protest, the radical Marxists made a call out to underworld criminals and tried to incite these criminals to bash and possibly kill the attendants of the peaceful counter-protest. The Marxist radicals were laughing and cheering as these criminals went around intimidating the Jewish counter-protesters. The Jewish activists subsequently needed a police escort out of the campus. The underworld thugs followed them out and a dangerous car chase ensued once the Jewish group got into their vehicle and the police left the area. And we're getting chased by a guy, uh, my man in the car. So no, no, you turn. Okay, this is the time. We'll just keep doing U-turns. Uh, whereby... Norm, I want you to meet Madeline Sikovic. Madeline is the queer officer for the Monash Student Association. And on the Monash Student Association website, in the queer section, Madeline and her, uh, or Maddie for short, and her uh, friend Kelly, who's also the other queer officer for the Monash Student Association, they introduce themselves to the world. And they introduce themselves, uh, and I'm, the focus will be on Maddie in this case, as socialist activists who want to use our office to organize and promote left wing activism. Uh, they want to promote, supposedly, they want to promote equality. They're fighting for queer rights, and they're fighting against far-right, homophobic, and transphobic politics. Now, on the night of the 5th of May, that's two nights ago as of the date of this podcast, the 5th of May 2024, this queer officer, Madeline Sukovic, who is supposedly trying to create a safe space for queers and maybe perhaps even other minorities on on Monash at Monash University, called in a bunch of far right thugs from the underworld, the Middle Eastern underworld, and I use far right deliberately here because these people happen to be homophobic and transphobic. There's uh, it's a well known fact that they are, and they will kill uh, ho um, gay people and trans people without even batting an eyelid in the name of their religion and their culture. So she called these people in, these thugs in, to bash and possibly kill because these guys, they're quite capable of killing people. A queer officer for the Monash Student Association specifically called them in to the Monash Clayton campus to bash and possibly kill pro-Israel activists that came on the campus and that were exercising the democratic right to peacefully counter-protest. Let that sink in for a moment. What was their crime? What did they do to deserve to, to get bashed and possibly killed by a bunch of thugs? So I'll let Madeline Sikovic explain to you why she felt threatened threatened enough to call in a bunch of thugs to uh, bash us and potentially kill us. Yeah, we're actually not going to be intimidated by this. We're still going to stand out here and support Palestine. But we don't think that that, um, you know, a small op opposing group of people who, you know, hold Australian and Israeli flags playing waltz and Matilda is actually going to cow us from um, supporting the Palestinian and Israeli flags playing waltz and Matilda. Holding the Australian flag and the Israeli flag and playing waltzing Matilda. So that's what they found to be threatening and intimidating. And they cast that as an invasion of their camp. And then Madeline and her Marxist associates were subsequently making phone calls. I personally witnessed seeing her make a number of phone calls where they were calling these carloads of thugs to come down. And Madeline and her Marxist associates knew exactly what they were doing when they were making these phone calls and posting messages on Instagram. They knew what these thugs were capable of, and they were encouraging and inciting these thugs to come to the campus 
to bash us and possibly kill us. These thugs, these criminals are capable of anything. But if you actually watch their uh, the video that these Marxists at the Monash University Clayton Campus uh, pro-Hamas encampment made, one would get the impression that they were the ones that chased us out of, uh, out of Clayton University. It's really important what we did here of standing our ground. What do you think about how many... So you didn't stand your ground. All you did was you called in a bunch of thugs to come in. Uh, they tried to bash us and they tried to kill us. That's what you did. People came out to defend against the Zionists. It's so wonderful. We got so much support from the pro it's so wonderful we got so much support from the pro-Palestinian community, i.e. you called in a bunch of mafia, mafia thugs. Palestine community. It says a lot about our protests, I think. How you guys? It's a, it certainly says a lot about the fact that you are not peaceful. You are a violent movement. You do not stand for peace. You are not peaceful. You're not a peaceful movement. Your motives are not peaceful. You've shown your, your true colors. Best feeling about how many people came out here to defend against the Zionists. Pretty good. <laughs> so it's pretty good. They're all smiling and laughing at the fact that these that we were very close to getting bashed and possibly killed. These people are completely and utterly diabolical. These so-called activists. This shady character right here was going around openly boasting about how he bashed several men in the city and that he's now at Clayton campus looking to bash Zionists. So in this section here, you'll see some of the activists, some of the woke Marxist activists actually smirking and laughing at the prospect of us getting bashed seriously hurt and possibly killed by these underworld figures that they had called in. These people are just pure evil, these activists. They make a good case as to why these camps need to be dismantled because all these camps do is they instigate they instigate violence, they incite violence and division and hatred. <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good. <laughs> Actually, if you were to watch their video, one would get the impression that it was Lola, the transgender activist that chased us out of the campus. So I decided I'm going to come out. I'm going to defend this camp. When it's fa in fact, it was these underworld thugs who later uh, followed us. We had to get a police escort out, but then there was also a car chase. That's it, that's fine, no worries. Yeah. We were chased for a good 10 minutes. They followed us out of the campus. They tried to intimidate us. Uh, there were a few cars that were following us and chasing us as we were going out of the campus. And the footage is, isn't the best here, but you see a car coming in, a white car tries to cut us off as we were trying to get away from them as were, these mafia underworld thugs were chasing us. They did a sharp turn. They tried to cut us off as we were trying to get away. And then the driver, the person that was driving, had to do a sharp turn to the right into a side street in order to get away from them. And this was happening for a good 10 minutes. We were going in, in circles. And it was quite a scary and dangerous situation to be in. So these social justice warriors found that funny and amusing. They try to they like to portray themselves as victims, as peace activists, but they're anything but. They're very violent, they're very dangerous, and they're diabolical. Now, some of you who are watching this might say that our side, the pro-Israel side, instigated this. We were asking for this, we were asking to be attacked. We didn't have a right to be there. Well, my response is very simple. Protesting, free speech, the right to assembly, the right to not just the protest but the counter-protest is a fundamental basic human right. It's part and parcel of living in Australia. To take that away means the end of Australia as we know it. And we are almost at a point of no return. Middle Australia, the average Australian, you need to wake up. Do not be apathetic. We saw what happened 
to Bishop Maramari Emanuel a few weeks ago, where he was nearly murdered by a Muslim extremist in his own church. That was just the tip of the iceberg. There are also other terrorist attacks carried out by Islamist extremists in Australia over the last decade or so. Nasser Mashini and the Marxist pro protesters at Monash campus and other campuses all around Australia, the Islamists, they're all quite open about their desire to destroy Australia, the nation state of Australia. They're open about it on Australia Day, which, uh, which they refer to as Invasion Day. NASA Mashini is quite open about it. So Australians, you need to wake up. Do not think that this is just a problem that concerns the Jewish community. Are Indigenous Australians getting radicalised by Islamists and anti-Israel activists? Anti-Israel activist Mohammed Sharab was recently arrested for kidnap, torture and assault. Here he is prior to his arrest speaking alongside an Indigenous Australian activist. Uh, my name is Kieran. I'm a Australia of Wandi Wandi country in the UN nation. So my name is Mohammed Sharab. I am a Palestinian from Gaza. The colonial entities are going to call us terrorists. And, you know, at the end of the day, to them, we might be terrorists. At the end of the day, like, you know, if we're being honest, we are. We are. We have every right to become terrorists of these colonial occupations. They have to instead deal with the new generation who isn't coming for peace, who isn't coming for compromise, who is coming for full liberation, who's coming for our land back, and is coming for a reckoning. For We haven't even started the, the proper resistance action yet. We will. It's, a, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. How many decades now terrorizing our people and occupying our lands? Any sort of, you know, terrorism that we might commit is justified resistance. Is justified resistance. It's legally justified under international law and it's justified morally and it's justified ethically. Because at the end of the day, what is happening to us is more egregious and more disgusting and more harmful than anything that we could ever do back to our colonial oppressors.